Hey folks, and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 11th of June 2020. Uh, today we are going to run through some pairs, so let's get started. Um, I've looked at, I mean, so much. Let's have a look at some crypto. I know there are some guys in here and gals that like to look at crypto, so let's just walk through these one by one. And we're going to start at Ethereum on the monthly chart. Um, and the software can be used on on any instrument monthly weekly daily uh, any time frame any instrument as long as your broker has a price feed for it so i mean let's have a look here um this is long term price there's no historical data really and so there's not a lot to see on the monthly but on the weekly chart we can see that we have reacted on this weekly area of demand we had this nice one here uh, this rectangle here the the dashed line was drawn when this green candle here closed when this closed this was on the chart <clears throat> so before this massive rally a couple of years ago um, this box was drawn here and it was telling you to start buying at that point this one here right here was was uh, was drawn when one two when this red candle closed and this turned out to be a beautiful trade price poked back into it and then we left um, okay and so I mean, you're getting these boxes drawn on the chart days weeks months and sometimes even years in advance so there's loads of time to plan the trade so looking at this I mean what do we have what we have is price reacting at weekly demand so the immediate answer is to the question what is driving price well that's weekly demand so now you notice where we are uh, relative to um, other significant buy and sell zones and we do have a couple of sell zones that we should be maybe a little mindful of if we zoom in just a little bit you can see that we had this really nice area of monthly supply that was formed and price was able to return to this price point this price level and retreat okay and so that is telling us that we have a pretty good um, likelihood that price is going to have an, a, a bounce at um, should the price of Ethereum American dollar move higher than this? Okay, we also have this one here, but note as well, currently we are reacting at a market structure where we have this high, this low. Let me just draw this in for you so it's clear. So we go from the high to the low, low to the high, high to the low. So we managed to move below this, this low just here, which gives us the ability to draw a trend line which would look like that <clears throat> currently we're reacting at the trend line at an area where we could expect price to have a bit of a bounce so you notice this is a candle that left the area of distribution I'm just going to draw that in like this we'll just make it big and brutal now and we'll refine it shortly but it looks like that so this is a pretty interesting area uh, to sell at okay and this is interesting interesting because when price left this area of supply we move through this area of demand and why is this demand Well, this is demand because we managed to move um, through this where is it this one here got pretty ugly stuff there okay here good so we had <clears throat> we had quite a few things going we had we had this one here so we had the candle to the left this is distribution the high of the candle was here this one has been tested okay tested so this is the area of uh, parent supply it was tested we formed a child below it so from here to here okay now this is gone tested a bunch of times then we left this area here removed both the parent and the child so that's gone leaving us with this right there the software found it perfectly this one tore through it so we ask yourself the question what area did that well it was this one just here at the top so this is an interesting area that we can expect some kind of a bounce at. I don't know how long it's going to take or how long price will stay there and and figure out what it's going to do but we're probably going to have a bit of a, a shorter term reaction here where price will likely return to a buy zone before it continues moving higher if that's what it decides to do but there's not a lot of clarity on this time frame so we go to the daily chart to have a closer look and you can see that we have a nice daily area nested within this one so we'll do our technical analysis 
we find the area of supply. Okay, this is the area of supply. It's a messy one, but we have a distribution candle just here. The higher this candle is not within the range of the previous, the preceding, or the following candles. And so this is the only candle that we can put a rectangle on. And so that's what the, the software has done for us. So we've marked off this area here. So we're expecting price to go to that area and have a bit of a move lower. Note this candle is also accumulation. It follows this distribution. Sorry, this is distribution. It follows this distribution candle. The slingshot was pulled back to where? It was pulled back to here. So for this, I would be comfortable going from the high to here. And I'd probably want to go above the high. So maybe something like that. Okay, for the time being, let me move this line. Okay, um, but now price is currently reacting at this. And this is supply because we removed this demand. We gap through it. We have this one. Price sat on it for quite some time. And then we had, yeah, we'll just mark off the whole thing. It's not a, a pretty face, but we'll just do this. Okay, this, this is kind of like kind of a gap low, so we won't, we won't look at that one. So we'll take um, the low of the lowest body that is kind of efficiently within um, uh, the range of the previous candles. Okay, so this is kind of the area of distribution, price gap down from there. And now price is currently testing that. And sorry, it, it did test it here. And now this has been removed, but we had, yeah, we've managed to close above that area. Okay, there's not a lot of anything in here. This is pretty messy. The only thing that looks remotely interesting, which is not really, is this one here. And this is interesting because we probably had micro supply in here. Okay, this was tested once, twice. And the origin of the move that removed this, you can't see it on this time frame, but my stomach tells me that there's something in here on, on a smaller time frame, maybe the hourly. Um, tested it, tested it, we moved up through it, the slingshot was pulled back and it was removed. So the slingshot for that one is the lowest retracement since the establishment of this area of demand. So this is the buy zone, this is the demand. So this is where you would want to get out of your trade should you decide to sell here, because this is probably where we're going to have some reactions. Looking above price, you know, let me remove all of these rectangles so we have to do all the work ourselves. I'm just going to turn this off here. So I only have the ones that I draw. So this is what we have there. Okay, price is currently kind of struggling to move higher. We have accumulation distribution candle, have the higher the candle, which is here. This is where price went to, to the pip. And again, it looks like magic, but it's not. This is expected behavior. Um, and if you're wondering why it's expected behavior, you can go and look at the, um, the video that I did uh, yesterday. Okay, this is a pretty interesting video where I go over of uh, where these buy and these sell zones are located. So price poked up into that area, and now we're kind of doing something. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, we have this, which is pretty messy, um, and above that, where you can see that we had a really sharp gap down, and we have another price structure here that look that needs to be uh, analyzed. We have this. This is a slingshot, so we have this above price. Okay, so yeah. Here we have demand, here we have the sell zone, sorry, the buy zone. Here we have um, supply, here we have the sell zone just here and above that we have here and the sell zone lines up nicely with the area of supply here. So this is the, uh, this is Ethereum, um, American dollar. Let me remove all these and go to the next one. US dollar, no, where are we here? Sorry, here we have dash American dollar. Go to the monthly chart, see if we have anything. Don't know if we, we don't have enough data, go to the weekly chart. It'll start analyzing in a second, just needs to... Oh, sorry, I turned this off, didn't I? Silly me, so I'm just gonna go like this and go to my default template. Go to the weekly and then it'll start. There we are, good, so we have this now. We don't really have more data than this. That's okay, let's just zoom in and look. So what do we have, what do we have? Okay, so we have a lot. We have this area here. You know, let's go back to the monthly and find all of these big gun spots. So we had this area. This is the accumulation. Price flew up. The lower this one is here, so it's probably looking at something like that. 
something like that. This one has gone the area that did it. Something in here, this is really rough because these are really big bars. Um, so we have an interesting area, or potentially interesting area there. If we go to the smaller time frame, we can see that is just here. Okay, and that area is uh, up here at the 331 level. And our price is currently kind of feeding low. We can, unfortunately, we can't see further back than uh, 2017, which is not that long ago. That's when all of this, um, all of this madness occurred, and then we had these massive pushes higher. Uh, 2018, 2017, 18 actually it was. Price reached these insane levels, and then price sold off. Okay, and so we do have price kind of. I mean, it's difficult to say on this time frame, but on the monthly, what do we have? If we look at this, what is price doing? I mean, there's a lot of accumulating. You think like, are we accumulating or are we distributing? We don't know yet until price picks a side. And so for the time being, there's not a lot to do on the monthly chart for this pair at all because we have not been told if it's supply or demand just yet. What we do have is we do have a couple of areas that could be interesting. We have this one here, which has been tested see this one here when price left here we remove this area here when price left here <clears throat> we managed to remove a couple of areas here this one remove this one you know see these are all linked together okay so it's not just random uh, rectangles being drawn all over the place um, and then we have I mean this one here is the one that removed this and so this is interesting um, we have this one here when this this is kind of the origin of this move and so we could for this one look to the beginning of the cell zone which is the deepest retracement into it, which is around here. Uh, right, so what's, what's that? Oh, it's up to see 86, 85 ish area, something like that. And the price has had a bit of a bounce there, but we haven't had a big bounce, have we? But this candle did manage to close below the range of the previous. So on the daily chart, this will probably look like a big deal. Yeah, and so you can see that quote unquote big deal just here. How we have this candle here. This is where kind of price went up to, and then we left. And this one, remove this one. This one is uh, demand because we managed to move through these micro uh, supplies up here. And also price had a test here telling us that we have uh, an interest in holding price above this level. Now it's removed and now we're currently reacting at that. But notice that there is absolutely nothing to do here. This is, there's nothing interesting in here, buying and selling. You wanna be doing this to the extremes and this is just kind of messing around in the middle. So we have kind of sideways price movement and so price can easily just kind of like go up and down all day long just washing people out of their positions or testing people's uh, patience while these trades uh, work out when I look at the extremes and we have something down here we have accumulation we know this is accumulation because when price came down here and released it released higher okay so we have the candle that left there's this one this is the area here so this is an interesting area if you're looking to uh, get involved with this to buy, you might want to wait until price comes down to the 42, which is, is roughly half what it is now. Um, the buy zone, well, is currently there. Um, above price, what we have, <clears throat> I mean, it's nothing to sell at until above this high here, because this is where price came back to this being the area of supply. If I remove this and all the lines so we can see it clearer, you can see that, I mean, this is where price came to, but notice on this one here even, price has already traded this area here. So what area is the one that is actually responsible um, for doing uh, doing some damage? And you can see here very clearly that we had, okay, but you can see here we had test, test, distribution, boom, the knockout punch, the knockout punch in here. We'll just go like that. Just for the sake of example, we'll nip down to the <clears throat> for the four-hour chart and have a look. Bet you there's something in there. I bet you there is. There is right there. So we have this little one here. <clears throat> I bet you if we can see, I'm going to mark off this. We probably don't have data for it. Let's have a look. Half an hour. Okay, let's see if we can go back there and oof, brutal. There. Got to find that line. Getting close, getting close. Oh, I can smell it. We pass it. No, oh, there it is. 
yeah, I mean, we can't see anything, but we did. I mean, there's probably something in here price would not just stop like that for no reason. So we have accumulation. This one closed above. So we have this right there. This is kind of a kind of a funky area. We'll kind of look at that. This is a Divas retracement. This is two. Um, I'm just going to remove that. This is something in here. And this is the release point. And then here, I mean, price sat on it and then removed it. Okay, so that's important. We know that there's there's a lot of buying at that price point we saw. I shan't try to find it again. It'll take me all day. But I mean, price really went north and now it's gone. This is good for us. So we need to find the one that did it. What one removed that? Okay, and so you need to find these little price points. And you want to find the ones where price is not messing around. You can see here how price is going to mark a couple of these off and then we'll look at where they are. You see this one here is not so interesting because there's a ton of trading around here. You want to see quicker releases. This is better. We had a small slingshot just there. This is above the area. And then, I mean, that's kind of it. There's not a, nothing else in there. Had a slingshot here, but it's kind of gone. So we want to see if we're going to get any reactions at that area. Uh, the price poked into the opposite side of it. Went a little bit deeper and then we left. Did we get up there? Yeah, and see here now, price poked up into that area, the one that we just looked at. But also notice, let's look where it stopped. This is this is where the magic occurs. You have to find, you have to study where price turns around and stops. Because this is, yeah, I mean, look at this. Let's get really close and dissect. Okay, so <clears throat> this is kind of the highest distribution candle since the release. Price released here. This is the candle that left. This is one candle that left, and this is the one that actually left all of these candles, managed to move below all these candles. So you could put it like that. And what I sometimes like to do is I like to look at the, the close graph because it kind of enables you to find those those price levels that uh, price commits to. When I say commit, I mean closes on. So if we kind of look at that, I mean, if you look at that, I mean, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? If I was, if I was just uh, racing over a bunch of charts looking, this would stick out to me. Okay, so this one here, this one's gone. This one's gone. Let's go all the way to the end and have a look where price went to. Air price went to it a little bit deeper. Price came down. Price went a little bit deeper. Okay, so this is that whole thing about the, the sell zone. The sell zone was this one here. Okay, the candle that left the area of distribution, the high of it. Now it's this. Once price tests that level, you don't trade at that level again. You trade at the high of the deepest test. This one here. And now it's this one here. So this is the cheapest price that you would sell at for the area of supply that we're currently nested in. And this is where price managed to leave. And notice here, that we had, we had a pretty interesting departure. It's going to go like like to the to the four hour chart just so I can change the color of it. Um, so we had like a really nice departure from here. Okay, and this is the beginning of the sell zone. So where do we go? And we haven't gotten there yet. But this is interesting. This is really interesting. So this is the beginning of the sell zone for this one here. But we've already been back to this price point where here okay and so you want to be looking you want to be selling um, at this area or higher <clears throat> so for doing that let me change the color of this we might not get through all the symbols because I'm just kind of going on a theory but we'll, we'll have a look at this one in detail and I'll go to Bitcoin before I finish up just because I know a lot of people are looking at that so let's go all the way over now so this is where we went to I mean notice look what look what look at this Okay, this is again, this is what I refer to as a price axis. If any of you guys were using uh, the Price Action Pro, which was um, the, f the very first kind of um, concept of the, the price action tool that I released in, I think I released it in 2011, you'll probably remember something called the price axis. And this is a price axis. And this is simply a price that price closes and rotates around. And look how close price comes to these. Maybe move this up a little bit more. You see, we kind of we got close on it, open, close, open. We come up to it, we test it, we close, we open, 
we do the same thing here we do the same thing here we test that area just here the lows of it and we kind of close roughly on it we open on it we kind of test it and then we leave so this is like a pretty interesting area here we have distribution what's the high of the candle the left it's this one here right there so you go all the way over once again scroll back to it I mean look at that remove that oh no okay sorry didn't want to leave that I mean look at that isn't that unbelievable how accurate it is buy and sell zones are so powerful they're so so powerful and I'm, I'm really hoping that um, through the materials that I'm presenting here that you guys can really um, uh, learn to find these yourselves because they're really uh, powerful um, levels very very powerful tools and they're, they're they're bound they're grounded in very sound fundamental concepts of why the price of, of a market will move okay so this is pretty interesting okay let me go up to here you can see here we had this really nice release this is demand because we had <clears throat> excuse me we had this area here that was tested quite a few times tested 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 this one tore it out the slingshot was pulled back and then we left but the candle that left is this one here the lower of the candle is the top of the box tested it tested it tested it tested it okay so this one is gone this one is still holding okay um, and so this is an interesting level and this is why price left okay we had this one here here we had a couple like a continue con continuation pattern in here no actually no this is this is no, the lower the, the body of this candle is not within range of the previous so we do have continuation patterns so you'd have something that looks like kind of from here to here the low of this candle okay this one here because the body of this one closed below the range of the previous distribution we tested it we went a little bit deeper what's, what's this again sell zone the deepest candle the deepest push into it right there that's the deepest push into the distribution prior to the release price almost got there we didn't quite get there did we what does that mean that means that price is probably going to have another go at, at trying to reach that area we did it we distributed price had another like a micro push higher we closed above this area of demand sorry this area of distribution um, and this is probably maybe tricking some people into beginning to go long. If they're watching this on the five minute or the one minute, they're thinking, well, we have a breakout. We closed above this candle. So people are buying. And this is when all their stops are hit. We've unloaded. We've already unloaded the, uh, the longer term uh, sellers. And now we're kind of moving to the opposite side of the market, which is where we have this buy zone just here. Okay. So really, really interesting. Um, yeah. So that was more theory than than anything useful to trade at but let's have a look at Bitcoin actually let's have a look at XRP XRP so let's have a look at XRP on the monthly chart what's going on Wow we're, we're really low we're really flirting with these low levels let's zoom in this is that monster candle that departed the low of it is right there where are these where is price going to where is price going to we're going to that level you can see on it on it we went a little bit deeper we went through it what does that mean that means the buy zone goes lower we go a little bit deeper we move higher and now we're kind of sitting around I mean nothing is going on the crypto the crypto is kind of ceased to exist it seems people have kind of lost confidence in it but you can see that we're starting to enter these uh, these very low levels and the beginnings of these buy zones so let's have a look on the weekly chart what's happening you can see the price is just wriggling lower okay we had this when price left here we moved above this supply so again I'm going to do this work backwards supply the supply because we left we went through all of these demands tested it tested it this price went just excuse me to the opposite side of it and then we gap down so this is still in play rather it's telling us where the beginning of the sell zone is but above that we have this just here we have a sell zone right there 
Um, and below price, I mean, price is pretty low, but yeah, price is just sitting around. It's not really doing anything. We need price to do something. We need price to let us know what it wants to do. And it's not. When we had this, just here, we had price do this. It's kind of gone, isn't it? This one's been removed. We traded above it. We kind of went, we gapped back down, likely as a result of poking into this. And now we're just messing around. People are doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have this area here. We probably we probably have something in here. That we can't see. Price tested it. We went up. We gapped down back into this area here, which is kind of the release. And now we're starting to wriggle higher. Price went up. The lower this can, which left this um, accumulation, we went a little bit deeper. Let's remove this. It's gone now. And so now we mark off this. So this is the next reference point. Would you trade it? No, because price has already been down to this price level here. So this is this is a mess. I mean, I wouldn't want to buy uh, at the moment. The only clear stuff that you can see, the only the clear um, cutaways are higher, meaning that I mean, you want to be selling and not buying unless we get really, really low. If we get ridiculously low, then obviously people are going to think that, well, let's maybe start to look to buy XRP. If you look over here at where we we left from initially, um, we had, look at this, we had, wow, this is crazy, it's so low. This is zero. And we had this, price went up, went down, we moved sideways, didn't move anywhere. We kind of, um, we had accumulation. This is the one that kind of closed above all of those. This one here did too, but these don't really count because they're, I mean, they're, they priced did nothing. And so what I would do is I would think that this would be a very interesting price to buy at if price comes back down there. And let's see how far we are away. Um, this is at the, the five cents, the five cents level, which is, um, pretty far away from price. We're currently at 19 and I mean, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening at all. Okay, let's have a look at Bitcoin and then I'll stop. Um, Bitcoin. What's going on here? See, this thing seems to be a little bit more active. You can see these again and you've got to love the software. This line, <clears throat> this, this, this cell zone was drawn to the chart when this red candle closed. So the software told you, it told you, end of January 2018, that if price comes up to this price level here, you might want to start to look to sell. What did it do? It went up to it, then it sold off. And this here, this, this area just here, this purple box was drawn on the chart when this candle closed. So, November 2017, the Pipnotic buy and sell zone software is saying, if price comes back down to this level, buy it. What happened? Price went down there. We sat in there for one, one, two, three, four, five months, and then we started to break higher. Okay. And we had another go. Price came down. We poked into this. We have a huge wick. Okay, and then price started to move higher. This is really messy. There's not a lot of clarity on the monthly chart. So let's go to the weekly and have a look. And if you have a look here, I mean, this is a real mess, isn't it? If you look at this, I mean, we have the sell zone. We, we, have, we already have the area of supply. This is it. So the sell zone is actually high. It's pretty high. And if you get through that, well, then you have to look higher yet. Okay, we have to look a lot higher. So if we, oops, see what we have. I mean, that's all we have. So, I mean, I'd be keen to sell <clears throat> from this price point and higher. But if you look at this just here, this is looking to be interesting. Where is the price even at the moment? Let me see. Okay, the 9,800, is that correct? And 9,800 is where we currently are. We have this just here. So we have... We have price rallying, this is really messy. You have prices just rallying, kind of messing around. I mean, look at this, how price, we closed here. We gapped down, 
we went down, we went up, we closed here, we opened here, we went down, we went up, we closed here, we opened here, so we gapped all the way down, we went down, we went up, we closed here, we opened, went down, we went up, we closed here, then we we gapped up, we opened here, went down, up, and then closed a little bit lower, and then we started to move away. And so this is inefficient um, misquotes. This is really messy. And so I would look at where we have efficient trading. And we have the efficient trading. Here we have the accumulation. This is in the range of the previous. This one left above it. So I would probably mark it off like this. The bottom rectangle would be an interesting area to begin to buy bitcoins if you f if you would feel so inclined um, but I'd actually I'd want to wait sorry before I get ahead of myself I'd want to wait until this is gone okay we have this area here it was price went up to the sell zone we went down we went a little bit deeper into the supply we went down we really went down and now price is looking to move higher you can see how price a close open close we gap down here we gap down sorry here we opened we closed we gapped up we went down this is like super inefficient uh, pricing um, and so this is just, just hopping all over the place it's hopping absolutely everywhere okay and so yeah this is yeah I mean I would I would want to buy lower and I'd be keen actually we spoke about this level we talked about buying at the 4100 area right there we talked about buying here I haven't looked at this for a long time we talked about buying right there a long time ago 4100 area maybe a year ago not even a year ago maybe half a year ago we talked or before price got there at least one well, what is this I'm just kind of bambling on yeah we talked it we talked about that when price was up around here so when price was here we said buy at the 4100 area if price comes there price poked into it and then it goes up I'll find that video and I'll post it in the comments of this video so you can see what we were talking a little bit about we also spoke about this one here and we also spoke about the 30 something area which is this one here the 3000 this one here which is kind of where the slingshot was pulled back before the release price didn't get there we reacted at the child this is the parent okay we went through this child almost down to the parent and this is where we left okay so very interesting but for the time being yeah I don't know um, we should have got on board down here at the 4100 area uh, currently I mean there's uh, we have some, some maybe some interesting areas to sell if we should look for selling I know some people are looking to get out of Bitcoin as well um, let's mark this area you know I gotta I gotta delete everything I'm gonna turn off this and then I'm going to be done. Go like that. And let's go to the daily and have a look at this high price point. It's right there. 20,000. Here it is. So, where do we have attempts to move lower? We had an attempt here. We had another one here. We had another one here. We had another one here. Which is the one that was capable of causing price to move lower well it was this one here this is the candle that closed below that so if we have a look in here I'm just gonna mark this off I'm gonna do an average of these three attempts it's probably gonna look something like that we actually have some demand here we'll just do that okay so I mean price tested this we tested the micro child in here with this attempt here this caused the child here on the micro time frame we tested it price sat on it a while and then we went through it but we did not close we did not close below this area here we have a parent we have the child price went to the parent just here just mark that off we poked into that one there but we did not meant to close below it okay what price level did price have to move up to in order to remove both the parent and the child that's this one here here this is where let me remove all these it's gone 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 remove all these see now all of this stuff is gone and the price level the price had to get up to in order to to do that was here so if we go here you can see pretty clear it's a really nice price axis see 
a very nice price axis just about here. So this is where we can expect price to maybe have a bounce in the future. Oh, it's already been there. That's already been there, and it did have a bounce. Um, so we need to look higher. So we have to mark off. So okay, so this is the beginning of the sell zone, the new one. We've got to mark off here. So we have to look at this one. Let me remove this. Then we have to take a deep dive. And this is interesting. This is all distribution. Which candle left it? This one here did. What's the high of the candle? Right there. Where did price come back to? Almost exactly to it. Okay, so now we have to look a little bit higher. Notice here that price has already been back to this area. And is this neat or is this messy? This is pretty messy, isn't it? I think we can all, all agree on that. And so where does the messiness stop? I'm going to move this and tell me to stop. Stop. Okay, this is where that, the messiness stops. So here we have strength, we have commitment. Okay, and so this becomes a new sell zone. This becomes the supply. I'm just going to mark this off here. Oops, this one here. Mark this off like that. Okay, so this is where price will probably have a bounce. We have a sell zone within it, which is here. Once price comes back to here and we're out, we don't do that again. We look higher. So this one's gone. Then we focus on this one here. Once price is re uh, rebounds to move back to this place here, then these are gone. Boom, these are both gone. So we delete all that. Then you ask yourself the question, after price has been back to this sell zone here, has price already been back to this price point? It has. And I'm going to ask you again to tell me to stop. Where does the mess stop? Here. This is where the mess stops. So this is a very nice place to sell for the reasons we discussed earlier. Before price gets there, we have a couple of other areas that we could look at as we discussed. Anyway, you've been going on for 37 minutes and that's plenty. Um, but um, I hope this was interesting. Um, it might be confusing if it's the first time you've seen it and I, and I can acknowledge that. It is maybe um, a little bit uh, detailed um, but it's not complex. I don't want you to feel that it's complex. I don't want you to feel that it's rocket science uh, because it really isn't. It's only one thing and that is an attention to detail. The only thing, the only thing that I have done in order to learn um, how to do this is doing it. I've just spent a lot of time looking at charts, um, watching why price turned around. So I'd find a price point like this and I'd, and I'd ask myself, well, why did price turn around there? So I'd mark it off, I go to a small time frame and I'd look for it. And I ended up realizing that here we had distribution, here we had the candle that left it, the higher the candle is here. This is where price went to and it left. Okay, so it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple methodology. Okay, but it's a very, very, very powerful one. Good, I will leave you with that. Um, I hope it was interesting. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment in the video below or in our Discord channel. And once again, thanks again for watching.